something light. The Olympics. What is,、mm. <laughs> what are you gonna take on the opening? Uh, it the the Chinese media had a field day. You know, everybody was laughing、mm. at the whole thing because it is kind of like funny in a lot of ways. But also, I also have a question: Why do they do that? For example, the Last Supper. Why do they poke fun of the Last Supper? I mean, I don't understand that. Why? I mean, it is absolutely grotesque. It is, it is so ludicrous. I mean, I, 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 I mean, I, you, you ask me a question, I don't have a simple answer to. I mean, I will say this:、um, France does have a long history of, you know, extreme,、um, uh, uh, you know, extreme partializer shock.、Uh-huh. Practices in its culture, you see it in its literature. I mean, you know, think of people like the Maquis du Sable, for example, or someone like that. I mean, you know, which is considered, you know, normal literature in France. People read it as literature. So, you know, du Sable, or you know, some of the paintings, the paintings and the poetry and all of that. So there is, there's always been a sort of tradition of shock, creating shock in France, but it's been. An elite cultural phenomenon. It's been part of French culture. Something the French do with each other. Not everybody likes it in France by any means. Why they would showcase it like that to the world is so strange. I mean, what message it was supposed to convey is so difficult to understand. I, I, I'm going to say this. I, I think one of the problems in the West is that we've become so. Self-obsessed, we become. We we look at ourselves and think about ourselves so much all the time, and we become accustomed to doing this for so long that we've no longer、uh, understand that you know others might see us in a different way. So I mean, you know, in, in France today, maybe some people think that you know this is all shocking and exciting and dramatic and. Uh, you know,、uh, progressive and radical, and yeah,、um, other people in the West might think the same. And but of course, France isn't just showing itself to itself or to the other places in the West. Whereas, as I said, some of this might be acceptable. It's showing it to the world as well, and the rest of the world is going to look. And as you correctly said, I, I think some of them are. Offended, but most of them are just. I'm going to laugh. I mean, I, 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 most reactions that I've see, seen feel that the French have made themselves look ridiculous. Yeah, and the other thing is the, the, the whole thing. China didn't censor any of that. Even the replay, there's still、mm. in there. But some actually, I think the NBC probably、uh, maybe more than the NBC. The, when you see the replay, they actually taking out some of those, <laughs> like the trees. I think the tree some, and then yeah, the, the three some. <laughs> I mean, yeah, absolutely quite. <laughs> so people are saying actually now, if you want to see the complete one, you probably need to see the Chinese version of it because it's still there. You know all that.、Yeah. <laughs> and, and the other thing interesting during the process when they they always have narrators, right? So. When these things come, and Marie Antoinette was holding her head, you know those all these kind of shocking、yeah. and doesn't make much sense. The things coming out, and then the narrator, everybody was just quiet. It's it's not just the Chinese,、uh, but also NBC. You know the the narrator, they all got quiet because they don't know what to say, right? So <laughs> no, exactly. So so what the Chinese media is saying? Okay, right now China is the most tolerant one in terms of you know culture differences, etc. Because you can still、mm. see that. So I find、Absolutely. that as. The, That's very it, interesting. It it, it 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 is absolutely hilarious. But as you correctly say, so uh, 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 most of the world is is laughing at France. I don't think they understand that, by the way. I think they thought that they were doing something, you know, really exciting and clever.、Mm-hmm. And as I said, it was just it was just a piece of utter stupidity. Yeah, and the the winner actually seems like、uh, lots of people going back to watch the two thousand and eight、uh, Beijing Olympics. Oh, yeah, and- absolutely. <laughs> And and then some people also I actually saw some people、uh, rerun for the 2012、uh, the London Olympics. I thought that there were some、yeah. parts of it kind of interesting too. Yeah. So so the winner is okay. Going back to the highlights of the other Olympics instead of this one. So I find interesting. I, I think the two. I think the China the Beijing Olympics、uh, set a standard. The 2008 Olympics set a standard in terms of its opening cere- ceremony that no one else、uh, can remotely hope to match.、Um, 
Um, I, 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 I will say this. I mean, I take an interest in Russian things, as you know, but I did think the opening ceremony that the Russians put on for the Winter Games in Sochi oh, was, was on, on a smaller scale, obviously, but it was good. And again, it, it, it highlighted the positive, the, the interesting things about Russian culture and Russian, modern Russian history. I thought it dealt with the revolution and the experience of the revolution very well, for example. And I thought, you know, I, I found the British one, 2012, rather chaotic, and I didn't always <laughs> understand exactly what was going on. But anyway, there was nothing there that offended me, and a lot of people did like it. Um, but this, this that we've just seen, this was, was grotesque. And it's so strange, because France has such an amazing story to tell. I mean, you know, of all of the countries of Europe, the nations of Europe, France ought to have been the one that did the best Olympic ceremony. I mean, they have um, an incredible history. They have an incredible culture. They have enormous cultural highlights that they could draw upon. Um, they could have done it. They could have done a wonderful effort. It's most odd that they didn't. And some people in the Chinese uh, social media are saying maybe the West is simply because the the uh, Tokyo Olympic wasn't very impressive either. I thought it no. was very strange and weird. No. Um, but Tokyo, maybe they want to save money or something. I don't know. But yeah. anyway, so there are people saying it seems to us the message is the Western almost give up on these things. They just uh, don't yeah. care so much. They just get well, over with. <laughs> well, I, I, I think this is right. I think where maybe... Chinese people making comparisons with their own Olympics. I mean, the, the point about the, the Beijing Olympics is that they were conducted with a level of conviction and energy that no other Olympic since has remotely matched. And I'm not just talking here about the, the opening ceremony. Um, when I was young, I remember in Britain um, in 1968, well, uh, and in 1972, especially 1972, which I remember better, and 1976, when the, the Olympics in Munich and Montreal, you used to see everybody, the whole country was glued to the television following the Olympics, not just the opening ceremony, but all of the events. And you used to walk down the streets and um, outside the, you know, the big department stores, there would be televisions and there'd be crowds of people watching to see the particular events that were taking place. It was an immense event. It was a tremendous event in which people were engaged and felt, you know, part of. And every decade since then, since the 70s, that slipped away. And today... If you were here in Britain and you people told you there was the Olympic Games going on, you wouldn't notice because so few people care. I mean, it, it, it's very sad, but people simply don't care anymore. I mean, they, maybe they've got too many problems in their own lives. Maybe they've got other things that bother them. Maybe the politics are different. I don't know. Maybe the culture has changed. But, you know, I can remember when there were the Olympics, it was the main story. What was happening every day in the Olympics was the big story in the newspapers. You started, you went to the newspapers, you're reading about this person running this race, that person swimming, that person jumping. It was, a, it was, and now it's very back of the back pages. Of hardly anybody cares. And as you rightly say, countries basically don't care anymore. And they, farm out the the Olympic the making of the Olympic ceremonies with these dodgy characters who come up with these weird ideas which m maybe they calculate will make them uh, gain them notoriety and therefore certain a measure of e financial success in their own countries but it, it's as if the conviction and energy has gone completely out of the thing. That's very unfortunate because uh, these athletes, right, they all prepare for it and they spend yeah. a lot of time and energy prepare for this is the game of their, their their life, right? So they, I think we should show some more respect for them. You always hear those, uh, you know, pretty inspirational stories that like somebody coming from a poor village, you know, but made it because yeah. the hard working, et cetera. Those are very, always very interesting and inspirational stories that I like to hear, you know, and listen.
during the Olympics, you can hear more of these stories. That I, I find that's part of the fun for watching the Olympics, right? You're you you are absolutely correct. I mean, that was the fundamental thing about them. I mean, it was um, now my great grandfather, uh, uh, who became mayor of Athens uh, before the First World War, um, he was in Athens, of course, when the Olympics, the first of the modern Olympics, happened, and he was already a well-known person then, and he got to know Baron de Coubertin. And I heard from my father, who of course knew my great grandfather, um, all all the stories that he had to say about Baron de Coubertin, who was the Frenchman, by the way, who set up the modern Olympics. But de Coubertin's idea uh, was a very idealistic one and a very hum a very humanistic one. It was to bring all the people, all the all the young people together in the world. And through the young people to bring all the societies of the world together, to have them competing peacefully through sport. The most important thing was not winning, it was participating. Everybody should get to know each other. They'd like each other. They'd make friends. There'd be friendships across countries. And the purpose was to give us all a sense that we were part of one humanity and to strengthen peace. I mean, that was a very idealistic perspective, uh, maybe a hopelessly idealistic one, but it was a great one all the same. And it was what made the Olympics interesting and good before. And I'm afraid of this very cynical and materialistic, in the worst sense, age that we have in the West now, where everything is basically bought and sold. I don't think anybody thinks like that anymore. And because of that, the Olympics has lost its way and it's become what it is um the olympics in beijing might eventually turn out to be the last true olympics that we've had yeah, that's i mean that's very very sad if that's the case yeah. right yeah and <clears throat> and the other thing is the olympic become too political you know they yeah. th that's another aspect of that i yeah. really don't like that they they don't invite the, the uh, they don't allow the Russians to come, but let Israelis come, yeah. and then there is all kind of protests, etc. I mean, why do they do that, right? If you if you don't want it to be political, then don't be political. If you are going to be political, at least apply whatever the political rule you have indiscriminately, right? Equally. Well, indeed, so. well, indeed, <laughs> but, but but it touches on another problem, which is of course the West feels that fundamentally it owns the Olympics. <laughs> so this is one of the reasons why they can have a ceremony like this, because of course it's a it's a ceremony about the West, the West's weird ideas to itself. Yes. They don't worry about what the rest of the world thinks because the West of the world doesn't really matter. Uh, and even, even in the framework of the Olympics. So the West is in conflict with Russia, so Russia must be kept out. But Israel is still a part of the West, so they must be kept in. And again, what the rest of the world feels about that doesn't really matter either. Now that, again, uh, and as I said, I mean, my great-grandfather knew de Coubertin. I've had many stories about him. That was absolutely not de Coubertin's thought. I mean, he was a French aristocrat, very much steeped in, you know, um, European culture. But he had that imagination to see beyond it. He would have been horrified by that kind of thinking. Um, and um, But I'm afraid it's the thinking that still exists. I mean, the idea that, you know, we control it. It's our thing. We can do what, it li what we like. You know, we can have this in your face, if you like, in Olympic ceremony. You may not like it, but you just have to lump it. And, um, you know, we choose who participates and who doesn't. And again, um, the rest of the world, you know, they just have to accept it, whether they like it or not. And it's an, ar an attitude of extreme cultural arrogance, which is not sustainable in the world that we have now. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what's going on. Yeah. Mm. And the, also um, the, the whole uh, Kamala Harris taking over do you think, don't you think politics, at least in the U.S., is cruel and uh, dirty? Don't you think? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Extremely cruel and very dirty. I mean, you know, it's, I mean, it, 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 again, the, 
the cynicism and ruthlessness of it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just it's just it's just appalling. I mean, it yeah. and and it's it's so sordid. I mean, it's, ultimately, it's not about you know who's the best person to be president. It's about winning an election in November and keeping Trump out. I mean, it's really <laughs> ugly. I mean, it really is. Yeah. With that, let's see what's happened in a week. So we will. Indeed. So. <laughs> yeah. Indeed, let's see. So. See you next Wednesday. Have a very good. Have a very good week, uh, uh, Sophia. Until then. Sorry about the delay again. Oh no problem. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.